Do you have like a secret where you go to the gym like every day? And... Yeah, actually I do, but I'm also mostly raw vegan. Oh, That's raw vegan. See, now that would be hard for me because I am a meat eater, but... I keep it 80-20. Okay. 80% raw vegan, 20% is lobster, sushi at Nobu, oh. cheeseburger, and in and out Like, I just okay. got my little split. Okay, so sometimes you will yeah. sneak a little bit of deliciousness in there. Totally. <laughs> I'm vegan. I don't eat meat or chicken or pork or fish or eggs or dairy. I'm making an argument that our obsession with what's most efficient is causing us to objectify other living beings. The factory can't cost too much, either in its construction or its upkeep. This might mean building the smallest space possible to save on construction costs, or it might mean not maintaining the facility's inspections and cleanliness because that stuff can cost a lot of money. And if you hire workers who typically don't have legal defense or union support, you get cheaper labor and you can even work them longer hours because you don't have to pay overtime. These three examples of ways to cut costs in order to make the most profit show that if we think only of economics as what drives us in food production, we produce economically efficient food. But the question is, at what cost? A oh, vegan, that's quite a commitment. That's very difficult to stay with that, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know if it's that difficult. I have to say, I've tried vegan -y food. I've tried vegan -y food, and it makes me very active. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why. You mean it makes your body work? I posted some food photos this summer. Oh. And you know, and for me, it was a celebration because I'm vegan. I'm here so excited to be a part of this because I think this moment can be about so many different things. And for me, I want to bring a message, which is veganism and that there doesn't have to be torture in fabulous fashion. For many years, I would go to sleep and wake up tired. That's because my body was processing God knows what type of crazy, wicked shit that was approved. So in going vegan, I realized that there is like this militia. There is a a force, a dark force out there that is that's doing a very good job of keeping us all sick. Your body makes acid to break down mucus. The mucus is created because you're eating things that you shouldn't be eating. And there's a pill for it. And they're doing a good job beating us all up, both on nutrition, giving us, you know, the wrong information on what's good for us and what's healthy for us, and then providing us some magical little pill. So I wanted to posse up and create a game called V-Gang. I've been an animal activist since I was little, you know, rolling nickels and quarters and sending them off to animal causes. Well, I've been involved with PETA since I started on Baywatch, when I started getting a lot of attention for things that I thought were ridiculous, like my boyfriends and my boobs. So I thought I wanted to share the attention with something really meaningful to me. So I became very good friends with Dan Matthews, who's the vice president of PETA, and we've traveled all over the world, been able to change laws all over the world to help animals. According to World Watch, 45% of climate change is directly and indirectly the result of animal agriculture. The facts are out there, and I think it becomes incumbent upon us, if we're going to live reasonably self-aware lives, is to become aware of the consequences of our actions. Honestly, being an animal activist can be really hard because every year 100 billion, over 100 billion animals are killed by and for humans. That's a billion with a B. So it's challenging. But on another hand, being an animal activist is kind of easy. All I have to do is remind people of what they already know and remind people of what they already feel. So I assume everyone here, except for the sociopaths, has had that experience of like, bonding with a cat or bonding with a dog and feeling that heart-expanding love. Das heißt, das ganze System ist ein derartiges Maß an Tierquälerei gegeben wie in unserer Zeit. Das kann nicht gut gehen. Jeder, der den Kopf hat zum Nachdenken, der weiß das. I dropped over 100 pounds, but I'm young. I just felt like changing my life, doing something different. And so I became a vegan. And um, becoming a vegan, it gave me another um, opportunity to live a healthy life. And I was just horrible. I was so congested from all the drugs and bad cocaine. I could hardly breathe. High blood pressure, almost dying. And arthritis. And once I became a vegan, all that stuff um, yeah, diminished.
I heard that you're vegan. Two years, yeah. Two years yeah. vegan, two years for me oh, vegan as well. It, it's amazing, right? Look at the difference between, this is before you decided oh, to. Oh, you gotta check this out. Look, so this is what you look like. Look at the like. Michigan, man. All right. Look at the Michigan, man. Uh, oh, no, not right. this guy. Yeah. I was just gonna... Oh. And now look at you because two years. We're here in Verona. Where do you and I find vegan food around here? Well, listen, um, you have to bring it with you. Don't use animal products, don't use leather. I thought that I was avoiding wool. I never knew that suits were made of wool. I had that rationalization. Well, it's something that is just taken off them and there's not a lot of abuse, which seems incredibly naive. That's a nice way of saying it. And so I realized that it was something that I wanted to avoid. When Peter sent me that video of this undercover investigation of what happened in these shearing farms, that was really eye-opening. 